Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're gonna this interesting viewer suggested capitalist questions, so stay tuned. Okay, we have an interesting calculus question. The question is for three constants A, B, C. Your f of x is a times e to the power of 2x plus b times e to the power of x plus c. Satisfying those two conditions. One of them is limit x is going to negative infinity, f of x plus 6 over e to the power of x is equal to 1. And f of ln 2 is equal to 0. That if g of x is the inverse function of f of x, in a graph from 0 to 14, g of x dx is now p plus q times ln 2. What's the value of p plus q? So it seems like the first step is to get the value of a, b, and c, right? Okay. So first of all, your f of x is now this. So using this first condition, we have now that the limit x is going to negative infinity. Your f of x was this a e to the power of 2x plus b times e to the power of x plus now c. And then that plus now 6 over now e to the power of x. In order for this to be equal to 1, right? Then your constant term part, the c plus 6, this should be equal to 0. So that's why automatically we can get the value of the c right away. c is now negative 6. Okay, since your c is equal to negative 6, then your f of x is now everything now minus 6. Then at the same time, if you write this out, uh, then we have first condition will become now the limit. x is going to negative infinity. And then we have f of x plus 6, which means we only have a e to the power of 2x plus b e to the power of x over e to the power of x. So if you simplify this fraction part, we can divide all of your terms by e to the power of x. Then it is going to be the same as the limit. x is going to negative infinity. Then we have a e to the power of x plus now b over now just the 1, right? Question said this is equal to 1. And at the same time, this e to the power of x is now going to 0 if your x is going to negative infinity. So that's why in this case, your b is equal to positive 1. Okay, so so far your f of x is now a times e to the power of 2x, and the b is equal to 1. So that's why plus e to the power of x, and c was now negative 6. Okay, then the f of now ln 2 is equal to a times now e to the power of 2 times ln 2. Now plus, okay, e to the power of ln 2 minus now 6. And the question said this is now equal to 0. Okay, so for the first term, a times e to the power of 2 times ln 2. We can move this 2 to the exponent of now this 2. So that's why now the first term is equal to just a 4 times a. And then the second term is equal to 2 minus 6. This is equal to 4a minus 4. That is equal to 0. So that's why your a is equal to 1, 2. So we can complete this f of x is now equal to um, e to the power of 2x plus e to the power of x minus 6. This is the complete form of your f of x. Okay, then the question said your g of x is an inverse function of the f of x. Then we have this expression, integral from 0 to 14, g of x and dx, right? So if you say your g of x is equal to now k, right? And that means your f of k is equal to just dx. So if you get your derivative on the left and right hand side, then f prime of k dk is equal to just the dx. So that's why now this integral from 0 to 14 g of x dx, we can represent this as integral from, okay, lower bound than the upper bound, should be changing, right? And then your integrand has to be now then your k times f prime of k and dk. So now let's talk about those boundaries, like lower bound and the upper bound, right? Okay, then the lower bound has to be when your f of now k was equal to zero, and the upper bound is when your f of k is equal to 14. So just a little algebra, right? Because we already have this f of x is equal to this. 
Okay, so that's why using this f of x is e to the power of 2x plus e to the power of x minus 6. Let's first talk about the lower bound. So f of k is equal to e to the power of 2k plus e to the power of k minus 6. Okay, this is equal to 0, right? Okay, so that's why now this is going to be the same as e to the power of now k plus 3 times e to the power of k minus 2 is equal to 0. So technically, your e to the power of k is negative 3 and 2. But then again, e to the power of k can never be negative numbers. So that's why your e to the power of k is equal to 2. So that's why your k is now ln 2. So your lower bound is equal to then ln 2. So using the same logic for the upper bound, it is now an f of k is equal to 14. So that's why now your f of k, e to the power of 2k plus e to the power of k minus now 6 is equal to 14. So that's why, let's do the same thing, right? This is the same as then e to the power of 2k plus e to the power of k, and then minus 20 is equal to 0. So that's why I factor this out. You have um, e to the power of k plus 5 times e to the power of k minus 4 is equal to 0. So that's why e to the power of k is either negative 5 or positive 4. But like I said, e to the power of k cannot be negative. So that's why choosing only 4. So in that case, your k is equal to ln 4. So that's why your upper bound has to be the ln 4. Okay. Okay, so what you need to work on has to be now this integral from ln2 to ln4 of k times f prime of k dk using integration by parts, right? This is the same as then now k times just the f of k from ln2 to ln4 minus integral from ln2 to ln4 of just the f of k. And we have dk, right? Okay, so the first term is going to be just a 14 ln4 minus your second integral. And since we have this f of k as now e to the power of 2k plus e to the power of k minus 6, working in the integral is going to be easy, right? So that's why I combine everything, then it should have now 34 ln2 minus now 8, right? Okay, then that's why your p has to be equal to negative 8, and then your q has to be 34. Question is asking you if you add them up, what's the answer? So now we have 34 minus 8. That is now equal to then just to 26. So 26 is the answer for this question. And maybe if you want to visualize this, we can actually draw this x and y graph. Okay, then f of x should be looking um, just like this. And then that point is now ln2. Okay, this is your f of x. And then your g of x has to be looking just like this then. This is your g of x because they are um, inverse function. Okay, then there should be f y is equal to just the x graph looking just like this. And when your x is now the 14, right? So 14 would be here. Okay, 14 will be here, and then corresponding g of x value. Okay, this value is going to be then just equal to ln4. And of course, uh, for this y is equal to x graph, that part is equal to just a 14. That's just a little visual, right? Okay, so pretty interesting calculus questions. So I'll be back with more videos, more questions like this sometime soon.